Script Tags API is one of the most commonly used API in Shopify app development. And it's not surprising at all because with JavaScript, you can basically create anything like announcement bars with countdown, cart sliders, and many more. That's why in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create script tags for your Shopify Laravel apps using GraphQL. More on that after this intro. Now, before we start this video or this tutorial, I will assume that you have watched my previous two videos of this series. In that previous videos, I showed you how to install Shopify CLI, set up your development store, create Shopify apps and API keys and secret keys, and also create the menu item. So if you haven't watched those videos yet, I highly recommend you do so. I'll put their links in a video description below, or you can check out the eye icon right over here. Don't worry, I can wait. Are you good? Let's begin. Now let's start this video by creating our scripts page. So what we need to do first is to set up our GraphQL query. So open your VS code and then open the scripts page that we created in the previous video or tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to do is to set up our GraphQL query. So I'm going to create a new variable and I'll call this create underscore script tag underscore um, query. And then we're going to use the GQL function or template um, literal. So GQL, and don't forget to import that um, library. So import, it should be the GQL, GQL. And then we'll, while we're at it, we'll also import the use mutation um, hook. And then this coming from the Apollo client end it with semicolon, and then let's continue the GQL query. So we're going to use the mutation. Since we're going to create something, then it should be mutation. And then in this mutation, um, we are going to use the script tag create. And then we need an input for this mutation. So for the input, instead of the parentheses, create an input, and then and then inside of the input, I believe, let me just open my paper. We need the following fields, the cache, the SRC, and then the display scope. So let's start first with the cache. So for the cache, this is the way your script's going to be served. If the cache is set to true, because this accepts Boolean values, if this is set to true, then your script's going to be served under Shopify CDN and it will expire in 15 minutes. Whereas if the cache is set to false, then your script's going to be served as is, meaning it's not going to use any CDN like Shopify CDN. It's going to use the URL that you set in the SRC field. So with that said, for now, I'll just set this to false. So cache, I'll set this to false. And the next up is the display scope. So for the display scope, this is where you can limit your script, uh, where your script can be loaded. So there are three values that you can use for this field. First is the all, meaning um, your script will be loaded on all pages of the Shopify store, including the order status page. The second value that you can use is the online underscore store. Um, this will only load your script on web storefront. With the setting, your script will not be loaded under the order status page and the last value that you can use for this field is the order underscore status meaning your script will only be loaded under the order status page it's not going to be loaded on your web store front or on your online store so for this lesson we'll just set the display scope to all and the last field that we need to use is the SRC. So the SRC, this is the URL of your JavaScript file. So for example, let's use the script that I prepared for this video, for this tutorial. So this is going to be double quotes or string value. So make sure that you're using double quotes, okay? Because um, GraphQL queries don't accept single quotes. Make sure that it's double quotes. So here in this double quotes, I'm going to use the following URL, HTTPS weeklyhow.com forward slash uh, is it codes codes and then the laravel folder and then script.js 
Now the URL or the JavaScript file that I'm using in this video is just for test purposes only. So by the time I publish this video, this file should not exist anymore. So I highly recommend you use your own JavaScript file, either by hosting your own or by using someone else's JavaScript file. Speaking of hosting your own files, this video is affiliated with Hostinger. If you're looking for a web host provider, you can use Hostinger. It is fast, safe, and cheap. Check the link description below to get started. And by checking the link in the description below, you're not only getting the best web host services, but you're also supporting our channel. It's a win-win. Okay, so now that we have our input fields, the last thing that we're going to do is just to retrieve the, um, the output of this mutation. So we can use the script tags. And then it should be, we can get the ID, the SRC, and display scope. I think that's fine. So display scope. Let me just check. Script tag. Should be script tag. Script tag. We need the ID, the SRC, and display scope. If you want to learn more about this mutation, you can check the documentation of this mutation in the description below. I'll put that over there. So you can learn more about the fields that, I were, that we're using in this video. Uh, the cache, the display scope, the SRC, and the following um, query after the mutation. So basically what's happening here is we're going to create the, um, the script tag and after that's created, get, those, uh, get that script tag. So you can get the idea of that created script tag, the SRC, and display scope. And once we have that, we can use the use mutation to execute the following GraphQL. So we can create a new variable, so constant, and then we're going to use, uh, we're going to create a callback or a function here. So we can just call it create script tag uh, mutation. And then we can just get the data out of this mutation. So data, and then we can use the use mutation hook and then pass here the GQL or the create script tag query. And that with semicolon. And then you can use the, um, honestly, it's either you, execute the following function, or you can create a button that if you click that button, then it should execute the following uh, function. We can try to just execute that function. So create script tag mutation, and that with semicolon, and then let's go back to our Shopify app. And by the time that page is loaded, you can open your development store. And there you go, as you can see, now we have the following, the JavaScript from Weekly How is working. And there you go, as you can see the JavaScript is working. And there you have it, that's how you create script tags for your Shopify app projects or for your Shopify Laravel app projects. But there's one problem, if you keep reloading your Shopify apps, specifically the script tags page, it's going to keep creating the script tags and that's not what we want. So in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to check if our script tag is already created. If it's already created, you should refrain from creating another one. Otherwise, if there is no script tags under our development store, then you should continue creating just one. And that's it, just one script tag. But for now, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button and subscribe and hit that notification bell button so you won't miss our future uploads. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.